Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody. Hey, folks. Welcome to Monday night. And we're back. We're back. Yeah, we took a week off because, well, the kid had to get a prom dress fitted last Monday night. So mm -hmm. that was just maybe slightly more important. It was. It was a lot more important. <laughs> um, time is of the essence at this point. So, yeah. so we had to do some alterations. Uh, yes, most definitely. So of our schedule and your schedule and a prom dress. A prom dress. <laughs> so, so that's why we couldn't join you guys last week. Um, but we're back, and we just everything we planned for last week, we decided we just would do this week. Yeah, um, one week forward. Because we're kind of week by week with what we're what we're doing. We're not we haven't planned as well this year as we did last year. We were like on the ball last year. Well, we, we had a we had a roadmap. We, had a, we, we like knew, literally yeah. had a roadmap, right? We knew yeah, exactly we, where we, we were going. Kind of have a roadmap this year, but um, so we are cooking the books this year. That's mm -hmm. our our theme. Yeah. Um, but we are not traveling across country, but we are traveling through time a little bit and cooking from vintage community cookbooks, church cookbooks, you know, the old old fundraising cookbooks. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see as many of those these days as we used to, certainly. And some of the books from my um, heritage, I guess I'll call it a heritage collection, which is what we're using tonight. So, you know what we're doing. Yeah. Pretty much everybody else knows what we're doing because well, yeah, I've, I've told them as the, I've gone well, that and talked to people. It went on the web that what we were doing. Well, yeah. So, I have a couple of books that I'm working from tonight. Um, I picked one up on my way out the door to some place about two weeks ago just to kind of thumb through um, because I knew I was going to have spare time when I was out and about. Um, called The Backcountry Housewife. This is not an old book necessarily. Um, older, I don't know, 1980s, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, 85 was the first printing. Um, it is a collection, enough. sold enough, yeah. It is a collection of 18th century foods, primarily from um, from the U.S., from America. And more so backcountry Virginia. Um, so what I found in here actually is in Hannah Glass's um, Art of Cookery, Made plain and simple, which was first published. Plain and easy. Plain and easy. Thank you. Yeah, right. um, first published in England in 1747. Oh, so that's a little old. So, so yeah, this one kind of qualifies. Mm. This is clearly a reprint. Um, I think there might be two original copies left. Um, Hello, Costas. Hey, Costas. So, kind of working from both of these. Same recipe, however. This is just a compilation from several cookbooks that they did some research with. So, But I do have a, a reprint of the original. Um, but we're doing what essentially are scotch eggs. And when we get to that point, mm -hmm. I'll read you the, the recipe out of this cookbook. But along with that, we are doing... Scotch hot chocolate. Scotch hot chocolate. Well, actually, <laughs> drambouille hot chocolate. So we're doing eggs. So I thought, why... If we've got eggs, why not do like a breakfast theme? Yeah. And, you know, we need coffee. We've done coffee cocktails. We've on done a before. lot of coffee cocktails. So why not have a hot chocolate cocktail? And one of the hot chocolate cocktails has drambouille mixed into it. And Nikki is a fanatic for anything scotch. So, eggs. Yeah. Liquor. Liquor. She good. loves it all. So <laughs> we're going to do a drambouille and hot cocoa. Oh. So we've got to make the hot cocoa we before do. we can pour the hot cocoa. So I can't have a cocktail to start off without hot cocoa. Right. So let's make some hot cocoa. And we're going to make it from scratch. It's right. We're not using typically like, you know, weeknight when we want hot chocolate, I get out the hot cocoa mix and we go for it. And we boil water. Yeah, exactly. We're not boiling we're water. We're not doing that tonight. Nope. We're going for the real, the real we're, deal. The real deal Holyfield. Um, and that's right <laughs> leftovers from leftovers easter. from easter <laughs> we're doing it the right way so over there we have some milk half and half oh half and half or whole milk or whole milk and it's going um, in the pan but i just i grabbed half and half because why not and this is about two and a half cups so well, we'll bright. get hmm that is bright that is bright because that is white yes. so um you might just let them 
go back over to the board. Look at me for a while and not the bright white. And this is a five ounce solid chocolate Hershey's chocolate bunny. Chocolate bunny. We'll get them under the camera. Show them the camera. And because it is solid milk chocolate, we are going to crush it up. Otherwise, we'll be here all night waiting for it to melt in the milk. Yep. Would you grab me a knife, please? I forgot to grab one. And you can do this in a food processor if you want. Don't have to. Um, my, yeah, that was perfect, actually. Thank you. Welcome. Nice, a, a nice heavy knife. Yep, heavy knife. So we're going to cut its ears off. Yep, make sure it can't hear. So it can't hear. What's going to happen to him? So always and, the I first mean, we step. can be the meme. We'll cut the tail off. Yep. So that he can't go to the bathroom in the, in the milk. <laughs> well, you know, the hot, the Easter Bunny meme. One's yeah. no tail and one's no ears. Yep. Okay. So we're going to chop up the Easter Bunny. Yeah, and you don't have to do this very, you know, fine. It just needs to be smaller than <laughs> solid the Easter solid Bunny. <laughs> yeah. That way it melts into this. Um and I'm only kind of guessing that a five ounce solid milk chocolate Easter bunny is gonna be enough for two and a half cups of milk. If not, we'll throw some additional chocolate in here. It should be. Usually when I do this with milk, I use uh, Dutch cocoa powder and add sugar, but because this is milk chocolate, I'm not gonna add additional sugar to it unless we need to add additional chocolate. Mm. Making sure, oh, that's a good Easter bunny. We also have you did you quality control that chocolate? I quality controlled the chocolate. I see, I figured you would. A couple pieces, I'm gonna make it a little smaller, make it a little smaller. Yep, yeah. all right, leftover Easter bunnies, and this is gonna go you know, right in, no? sure. Because I mean, if we're sticking with the scotch theme, yep. it's a Scottish cooking utensil. Now, this will take a while to melt, so I'm going to turn this up. We don't want to boil the milk, however. You just want to simmer it and let that chocolate melt. And while chili is stirring, I'm going to rinse my cutting board off and get the chocolate off of it. Um... Normally, like I said, I use Dutch cocoa powder and I kind of eyeball things. I'm probably a tablespoon of cocoa powder per cup of milk. That chocolate has already dissolved. Like totally? Almost. We might need more chocolate. It didn't take long. Nope. All right, so one Easter bunny is probably not enough, judging from how light that is. So we're going to add, when I give you guys the recipe for this, I'll, I'll do it with the Dutch cocoa powder because not everybody's going to have a chocolate Easter bunny laying around. Um, so we're going to add an eighth of a cup, a quarter of a cup. That ought to be plenty. This is going to be super chocolatey. That's what we want, though. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we use what we have, so we use it up. Here, you want to whisk? Or just spurtle it? I'll spurtle it. Okay. And the thing that I don't need laying around the house is a chocolate Easter bunny that I eat. So instead, I'm going to drink it tonight. That's right. It goes well with drink, baby. <laughs> All right, how's that looking? It's looking really good. That's... It's a little warm though. So turning it down to low. Yep, I think you're good. The joy about you know this having some real chocolate chocolate is there are some, there are going to be a little bit of some chunks some occasionally. Chunks in there, yeah. yeah. You, you can whisk it if you want to get all the chunks and stuff out. But either way, I think I've done a pretty good job. You've done a great job. 
I turned it down to low. You know, once it starts to simmer, you want to turn the heat down. Otherwise, you'll get scalded hot chocolate. We don't want that. No. We want hot chocolate, just the way it is. So look at that. Test Perfect. that sucker out. All right. So what do we add to it? Chili bean? We add a quarter teaspoon of salt, kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. So already oh, Ooh, that's in. bright. Um, you can omit the cinnamon if you need to. Yep, if you're allergic to cinnamon. <laughs> if you're Uncle Dan. You can omit cinnamon, but we want to add the salt. Now, salt to the chocolate. You're balancing the salt balances the sweetness of sweetness of the cocoa. Mm -hmm. oh, we got people commenting. Oh, well, you stir. I'll read. Yeah. Hey, Kelly. Thanks for joining. Oh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> Kelly said the Pampered Chef food chopper would have been great on that Easter bunny. Probably <laughs> <Wow>. so. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. It's uh, no, Aunt Deb, we're just now working on the, the hot chocolate cocktail. The cocktail. Um, so we decided to make the hot chocolate from scratch with half and half and the chocolate Easter bunny and a little extra cocoa to kind of round out the chocolate flavor. It's... Uh, <laughs> All right, you want to give me something to pour this into? Yep, okay, so. I wouldn't use those. I'd use the thing that you put the milk in. Well, here, something I'll like give that. you. Oh, so you can pour it out. Uh -huh. first. Okay, here, exactly. use this. Sorry. You're fine. So there's our hot cocoa, folks. All right, we're going to pour it into something that will be easier to pour in the cocktail glasses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Kelly, I'm not sure this is going to be much of a Pampered Chef gadget night because all of our scotch egg preparation, for the most part, is by hand. Whew. Need help? Nope. Okay, don't need help. Yummy. All that glorious chocolate. Oh, that's delicious. Yes, yeah, start in there. Let's see. Empty. We're pretty much empty. So chocolate is also very fitting for the era that we're working with tonight because hot chocolate um, was common. And oddly enough, not necessarily with, uh, well, I don't know. They might have put whiskey in it at some point. What do you need? That, okay. This. I'm sure somebody put whiskey in it at some point, but um, oh, hot yeah. chocolate drinks were very common. So oh, the scotch eggs or the hot cocoa? Coming through. Which one? Where? I don't know. Kelly says she always wanted to see how they're made. So oh. we're going to add in two ounces of Grand Bowie per, per cocktail. Woohoo. You might have to explain what Drambuie is. We had to. It is a Scotch liqueur, Scotch base liqueur. So oh, if you're looking to the for theme. It, if you're looking for it, it, you will find it with your scotches, typically on the bottom shelf because it's a liqueur, not a scotch. It's a liqueur, not a scotch. And then we want to add that hot cocoa to our glasses. And it's pretty much that simple. That is it, folks. And if you wanted whipped topping and or marshmallow, marshmallows, anything like that on top. Now is the time to add it. Yep. But we're just going to oh. do it. Oh, I can smell it. Mm. Just like it is. These are going to be rich, too. Oh, yeah. With this heavily like this is chocolate, be this is one and done. I think. Well, it might be for you, but we've got plenty of chocolate left for, for a you. Little bit, little bit extra. Okay. Cheers. Cheers to us. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. This is delicious. Yeah, that's really good. I will tell you, the cinnamon mm. doesn't really come through, so I don't think you'd miss no. it if you don't have it. No. Or don't want it. But the, the salt. The really, salt balances yeah, it really well. it comes well. up really good. Mm-hmm. There we go. Mm. Yeah, if you have time to make the hot cocoa from scratch, 
make it and from it's, scratch. Yeah, it's so much better. Mm -hmm. So, mm. and right now is a perfect time to go buy your Easter bunnies because they're all half off. They're all or more. Or more. Mercy, that's delicious. There we go. Ooh wee. Ah, mm -mm -mm. Okay. okay. That's so rich. Um, I'm going to maneuver a little bit here. Uh, hmm. What are you going to do? Well, I'm trying to get everything underneath the okay. Over there. camera. Yeah. Right. Well, you um, know. Okay. So let me get the fryer. I'm going to use an electric fryer just so I can control the temperature out of um, what we're doing here. And then we will get started on the eggs themselves. You got the oil? Yeah, it's sitting over there if you want to grab it. Where? In the big tub uh, of oil. I see it. The one that says vegetables oil on it? Yep, that would be the one. Okay. One big old container of vegetable oil coming up. Thank you. All right. Um, so you want to use a neutral oil, vegetable, canola, um, something, you know. You want high heat oil? Capable? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So and peanut, I'm peanut oil would be good. Probably going to use the end of this. Okay. Yeah. Peanut oil. Only if you. I. I think peanut oil comes through as peanut. -y. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So I. I don't know that I would, but. I like peanut oil. Peanut oil is also considerably expensive compared to. It is. Um, I'm probably just barely at the right amount of oil here, but we're gonna make it work. Well, we're gonna we'll do, do a fine job. Yep, yeah, three seventy-five. All right, so here's the other maneuvering. Pardon. Oh, okay, let me get out of the way. Whoa. I'm gonna try not to drop this on the dog. Sorry, we're out. We're out of frame. There we are. Well, we're out of room. Is what we're <laughs> yeah, out we're, of. We are really out of frame. My next house is gonna have a very large kitchen, yeah. lots of countertops. Oh, they breaking saw that. the beast out. Yeah. The beast is out. The beast is out. The beast is awesome because it gives me extra counter space. Look at that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, it's great, isn't it? Okay. So, first thing I'm going to do is read you this recipe. Just because you need to hear it. Excuse me. I need glasses to do this. <laughs> I can't see without them anymore. Okay. So, in this, in this cookbook, um, again, we're looking at colonial America and just just shortly thereafter. Um, this recipe is called forced eggs and we didn't call sausage sausage or hamburger hamburger back then. We called um, meat that was that way forced meat because you force it through um, a grinder or you chop it. True. So forced eggs, boil the eggs hard and peel the shells off. We've done that. Uh, wrap them up in forced meat or sausage in our case. Fry them a fine brown, then cut them lengthwise with the yolks. Put fine brown gravy into the dish, thickened a little. Do not pour it over the eggs. Simple as that. We assumed people knew how to cook based upon three lines of a recipe. <laughs> um, that essentially is a scotch egg. The biggest difference is scotch eggs today are breaded before they're fried. So we are going to do that. Oh, I got our burning station set out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was set out really well just, just a few minutes ago. Except for I need room to actually make the scotch egg. Okay. So I'm I'm out of room again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so we're going to do a triple dredge on these once we get them going. So flour, egg, breadcrumb of your choice. Um, we'll do four... <laughs> we might do a fifth, but my fifth one kind of got crappy. Let me tell you, there is nothing that will frustrate a redhead more than a damn egg that won't peel. I've noticed. Oh, geez, it's bad. She gets all oh, pissy about it just eggs not peeling. It frustrates me to no end. And I had a whole bunch of them that wouldn't peel today. Because I boiled them, I did six minute eggs so they'd be jammy, meaning the, the center yolk is a little bit soft. Um, so I actually boiled them instead of steaming them and I never again, I will always, always steam my eggs because the shells aren't quite nearly as a pain in the butt. 
as they were today. Oh, is that what you did different? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, when you do a six-minute egg on the stove top, you always want to start your eggs in the water, otherwise they'll crack, like, you know, crack wide open. Mm -hmm. And bring them to a boil barely, turn it down and let them simmer. You let them sit for six minutes at a very low simmer, and they'll be a little, a little jammy on the inside. Um, so yeah, never again. Um, but that's what I did. <laughs> Chicken. Egg. Which came first? The man. Plain old pork sausage. I don't know if anybody else got that joke. I'm sure they did, but if they're laughing, they're not typing. They're not typing it. It's true. Um, one thing that I will tell you is you want wet hands when you're dealing with the. What's all this stuff? What's all what stuff? That's for the sauce. Oh, okay. I'm gonna get one of my microwave plates. That's. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> Sorry. This drink is out of this world. Uh, that it is. All right. You could probably get six out of a pound. What did I, did I do six the other night out of a pound of chorizo? Yeah. Um, we're going to cut this so we get five. So let's see one. Hey, math skills. What do you know? 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. 20 Roughly. Yeah. All right, so these have been cooked, peeled, soft boiled. Um, notice this one kind of fell apart on me because the yolk was much too close to the begin or to the edge, but we're just going to go with that. It might not turn out perfect in the process, but okay. What you want to do is kind of flatten your sausage like you would a patty. Like a hamburger. Yeah. Work with wet hands. No, it doesn't stick to you. So it doesn't stick to you. And very gently kind of mold it up and over the egg. And you'll have to kind of push and tweak and tweak team. and all those things. Might not be able to get five out of a pound. We're going to try. Well, maybe not really big eggs like that. Those are. Um, and it's okay if the sausage is, you know, a thin layer. It's not going to hurt anything. Well, it kind of has to be. And once you get up and over, this is why I was only going to do a few of them, because this takes a little bit of time. That and this egg was kind of a crappy one. All right, so once you're up and over, check the gaps. If you care if it looks like an egg, then actually got a little bit of shell right there that came off. Um, shoot, come on. You know, reshape it so it looks like an egg if you care, and we're going to set them to the side. We did these the other night with chorizo, um, just, you know, for shits and giggles mostly. I don't know that I like them as much with chorizo. I think, I think they were too, too spicy. Yeah. I, I prefer kind of the country sausage flavor with the egg. <laughs> so I'm just kind of smushing things up and around the egg. Just being very careful with those eggs. Yes. Soft hands, well practiced. <laughs> Is Robert on? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. If he is, he's quiet. Yep. Um, we'll probably get five out of this. I think I would tell you on a regular grocery store large egg to do four per pound of meat. But we're gonna 
make it work here. You want to try one? Who? Me? You. No. <laughs> nope. No, you look like you're... Uh... It takes some time. It does. That's okay, though. But I thought it was thoroughly fascinating. This is me being a history nerd. That there was a, you know, a similar recipe in a 1700s cookbook. Um, English cookbook that, mm -hmm. you know, given the history, understandably why it made its way to the U.S. And why, before it was the U.S. But, in, in the English cookbook. Well, yeah, then clearly. But, um, but scotch eggs are very much a British snack food. And they're served with anything from ketchup. We're going to do a mustard cream sauce, but mm -hmm. um, you can serve you them. You want to do one more anything. than hmm? do one more than um, Merle? Because we're not going to be able to boil all five of those at once. No, let me get one more done, and then that's what I was saying. We'll get. Um, so notice how she's making a little nest for the egg, and then it's. Yeah. And folding it up and wrapping it all around. And I'm just, I mean, there's no technique here, folks. You're, I'm squishing it. It's like Play-Doh. You kind of squish it up so it thins it out and forces it around the egg. Mm -hmm. Oh, your Aunt Deb says, thank goodness Robert wasn't on. He had <laughs> added to that comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that's what you mean, Deb. Yes, I'm sure. All right, we'll get a couple of these in the fryer and then I'll finish the last two. And if they look like eggs, great. And if they look like, you know, big giant balls, great. <laughs> we'll just go from there. Uh, would you grab my spider, please? Yeah. And I'm probably right in the camera frame, but I'm doing... Where is your spider? It's hanging up behind the sink. Um, dredge and flour, dredge and egg. into breadcrumbs. People can see it. And I'm not necessarily concerned about wet hand, dry hand here, because it's, Cause you know. The sink right behind you. Yeah. But if that bothers you, then, you know, feel free. Okay, so there's one, and they're ginormous. We're gonna cut into one on, on air so you guys can see them and we can eat, but one to do ya. Yeah. For sure. I moved the plate so they can see them. Oh, thank you. Okay, flour, egg, breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs, or crushed. You know, we've used crushed cracker crackers. crumbs, anything like that. And this is the difference between you know the Scotch egg and the recipe that I read a while ago. This part was not part of it certainly back then okay i am going to wash my hands and we'll fit two down in the oh we're going to do two at a time oh yeah yeah two at a time is all that fire will take you don't want to overcrowd because then they bump into each other yeah, and then you good. have you know problems you have issues they, um, don't, they don't play well together yeah what i am going to do though is check this there's the fryer Are we tempted up? Yeah, barely. Uh, shoot. We might, we might not be. Hang on. Okay. Thank you. You don't want to drop these if your oil's not hot enough because then they won't ever get done and you'll overcook your egg. 350 at the bin. Yeah, Three and go. a quarter. Three thirty. Checking the temp. Sorry. Um, Three forty. No, no. Let me finish them then. If that's if that's what it's doing, let it sit a little bit longer in heat. I'll turn it up just a bit. Um, because the reason the egg yolk and the egg itself doesn't continue to cook is because of the casing around it. So when you drop the the scotch egg into the oil it has to be hot enough to cook quickly 
Otherwise, you're going to cook through the egg, and you don't, and you don't want that. All right, so let's get us back over to here. Oh, sorry. My allergies are, like, all stupid this week. So if you hear me sniffing, that's why. Okay. So what hands make sausage application easier? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's Robert when I need him? <laughs> um, otherwise, the sausage is going to stick to your hands. You don't want that either. As you get not as smooth. That's right, ladies. <laughs> Don't want the sausage to stick to your hands. Oh, mercy. This is one of my favorite foods. And they're, you don't see them on menus much. Sometimes you can find them on a, like a bar menu if you're in the right place, but they're not. In the right locale. Yeah, they're not common in the U.S. by any stretch. Um, in the U.K., you'll find them all over. And I don't really know the origin story. It's like everything else. There's, you know, not much of one. Or there's competing. Okay, last one. Water. Um, I'm going to need more breadcrumbs if you want to throw mm -hmm. a little bit more in there. We can do that. I realized that on my last one. I did. Thank you. Perfect. Probably. And this is all we're doing tonight because this is enough. I've got uh, sauce that we'll make when we get the last batch in. The last batch of one? Yeah. These will take four minutes in the fryer. I've, I've got that down to pretty well a science at 350. Anything much more than that in your sausage is going to be Overdone. probably more well done than what you want. Okay, this one's being kind of a... You talk. Let me concentrate on getting the egg closed right. up here. <laughs> Debbie, your mom says Nikki was too little to remember this, but she had a friend who escaped Vietnam in the 70s with the boat people. She had two little children and she swam to the boats. You know, she was quite a cook. She made Asian version of scotch eggs, mm -hmm. lots of Asian spices and red pepper flakes in the ground pork. Oh, that'd be really good. I don't remember that, but I remember That's her. I said. Yeah. Said so you are too little to remember. Okay. okay. Yeah. You're getting there. It's kind of. I think I'm going to throw a little bit more of that hot cocoa and some bamboo in my glass. Okay. So there's our last one. maneuver this down a little bit so you can see better so in the flour and you're not going to hurt it throwing it around a little bit and if it starts to break open just push it back together reshape if you need to or care there's three We'll do the last two, then we'll get the first two in the fryer. And I'll start in on the sauce here. Um, sauce, I'm mixing together with things out of the refrigerator. So it's a simple. Very simple sauce. Simple thing to do. Um, and I like these with a mustard-based sauce. And I like these with a ketchup-based sauce, but not necessarily straight ketchup or mustard. But you want something a little bit acidic because the it's just it's such a rich snack. You want to drop one? In a second, I'm getting the temp. Okay. Um, so the acid and the the condiment kind of cuts through the richness of the egg. All right, we're at about three sixty. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let me get this last one done, and we'll. Yeah, so anywhere between 350, 375, you're good. And four minutes is all it's going to take. Unless you just really like the sausage to be crispy, crunchy, and completely well done, and then leave it in for five. Nope. Yeah, we're, yeah. Oh, hello. Okay, here, I'll let you drop that one. Although it may fall apart because it's brand new, but that's okay. Okay. Well, these were the first two. All right, you put them in. No, I need, you need that. I can't just drop them. You have to 
have to slide them gently into your frying oil, which you can't see because we'll show you the next batch sliding gently into the frying oil. <laughs> we forgot to change the camera and my hands are all yucky. Alexa, set a timer for four minutes. Here's this. Thank you. All right. Let me get my hands washed here and I will there we go. on moving. Oh, Aunt Deb had her first scotch egg at the Gold Rush Cafe in Paducah. Fun. Yeah. I love them. I absolutely love them. Couldn't tell you where I had my first one. Is there enough oil to cover them? Just barely. Okay. Uh, this one over here might need a little bit more. So if you don't have quite enough oil, that's like all the oil I have. I didn't, I forgot to get some. Oh. Um, you can flip them at the roughly halfway mark and you'll be okay. And I'm cleaning up my mess here so I can make the sauce. Thank you. Oopsie. All right. Whew. Yep. A little warm. A little warm over there on that thing. So there we go, folks. We've got some scotch eggs frying up. We've got our Grand Bowie hot cocoa. So I have sour cream. I have mayonnaise. I have mustard. I have lemon juice. Tell me when you're doing that, and I will turn it back over to there. Okay. So they can see it. So well, what do you have again? Hot chocolate. Okay. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is so creamy. I know. I think it was that Hershey's bunny. Mm -hmm. Well, then the half and half didn't hurt it. No, not at all. Okay. Sour cream, mayonnaise. What kind of mayonnaise? <laughs> Blue plate mayonnaise. Okay. <laughs> Using blue plate. Now. Using the blue plate. Um, spicy brown mustard, Dijon mustard. I just grabbed what was in the fridge. And lemon juice. And I'm going to eyeball this, but <clears throat> sorry, man, allergies. Let me tell you, grass, blooming trees, it's all beautiful. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> But my nose doesn't like it. Um, so equal parts mayo, sour cream. We're going to kind of shoot for about a quarter of a cup here. Keep scooting over that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. i got to have some place to put my spider. We're going to start with a tablespoon of the spicy brown mustard. And about a teaspoon of lemon juice. Oh, Hurley says he had these on this in San Antonio on the Riverwalk. Oh, there fun. you go. That's a great place. That is a wonderful place. I love the Riverwalk. Hey, Kelly, <laughs> Pampered Chef Whisk <laughs> and Pampered Chef Mixing Bowls. I knew I'd get some Pampered Chef in here somewhere. You don't need a lot. Um, if you don't want lemon juice or don't have it, any kind of vinegar will be fine. For 25 seconds. Yeah, 25 seconds. And I need this. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people have almost fallen in the river on the way home. There. Oh, at least a lot of people, yes. A lot on the river people. walk. On the river walk. It it's, is a fun place to, to get a little tipsy. Easy to <clears throat> fall in the river. I have a yeah. river walk story or two. Yeah, we've been there twice. I got. A dozen yellow roses one night on the river walk oh, for my birthday. Alexa canceled. Was I there that year? Yeah, you were there. She was the yellow rose of Texas that night. Because it was my birthday. He says he was a little rough. Oh, you were not. You were not drugged. He says he was roofied. Well, he might have been. He might have been. All right, here's... The first two out. Oh, those look so good. You want you want to show me sliding them gently into the frying oil? <laughs> okay, there you go. 
slide gently into the frying oil. Pampered Chef also makes the spiders. Kelly even still on. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> um, the sucker gets used a lot. Okay. It does. Set her again for another four minutes, please. Alexa, set a timer for four minutes. Um, okay. So Keep there we talking. Go. We're back to the table. The Pardon. I know. I, I have to go this way. I'm sorry. I'm letting you go. The allergies are more than I can handle tonight. So we do want to let these cool a little bit. Got a little pocket fuzz on that hand. But as you can tell, Don't they are... Don't get pocket fuzz on my scotch egg. I didn't. I got it off. Got it away. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands again since I just blew my oh, nose. Yeah. You wanna talk about your apron? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I am sorry. Notice we have the new aprons today. You know, sometimes I can get my sponsor to uh, spring for some cool stuff. Some cool giddy ups. So. This is a black Headley and Bennett apron. Headley and Bennett apron. So we have black on my blue shirt. And Alton Brown original Headley yep. and Bennett apron, Mrs. Chili. That's right. I figure if I'm sponsoring the dang thing, I'm at least getting my have name on it. My name on it, your name on it. My name on it. They're very high quality aprons. They are, they're heavy duty. As much as I'm in the kitchen. Hmm. And as much as I'm helping out. Yes, you need it. Proper terminology there. How's that? Miss my mouth. I'm sorry. Shame on me for missing your mouth. I know. Yes. More mustard? Yes. No, I think it's a good. Okay. Yeah. It's really good. Always taste to see where you're at. That's right. So it was. Tablespoon, I use spicy brown mustard, Dijon would work you want, you want spicy brown. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, lemon juice to kind of cut into the... Vinegar it up a little bit. Uh, sour the lemon mayo, up. yeah. It gives it a little bit of a Yeah. When you're plating stuff, you want to be, I don't know. Well, a, a good looking plate tastes better. As they say. That's rabbit food right there. Yeah. It's true. You don't want your eggs to roll. I've had to put on it. Let me just take it off. We're at 30 seconds. T minus 30 seconds. Okay. And I'll wait and get these out before I take it off. Um, I don't know. This is Jen Bax, and if anybody's having audio issues. I don't know. Hopefully, uh, nobody's having audio issues. Nobody's hopefully nobody's having video issues. Can you hear us at all, or are we just not loud enough? Testing one, two, three. They were acting like funny earlier. Alexa, cancel. Just need to make sure they're like, still turned on. Well, they are. They're they're turned on. Not yet. Okay. Last thing again. Oh, they can't hear Nikki. They can hear me. She's quiet. Well. And a scratchy sound. Yeah, tonight I'm scratchy. Now you turned off. Now you turned back on. 
Maybe it. I'll just talk louder. I'm scratchy tonight, so. Yeah. Move it up closer. There you go. I moved it closer to my face. Is that helping a little better? Closer to my face. All right. I'm going to. It's probably battery issues. Might be. Yeah. As long as I hear one of us from the country piece. Okay, I'm going to hope this was one of the better eggs. <laughs> yeah, it's still poppy, she says. So. Hi, Judy. Yeah, she's just turned in. She says it's static with Nikki being quiet. Oh, that's a really good one. Well, they could. There we go. Little, it's a little bit jammy, not not too much though, but not quite hard boiled. You know, hard on the inside. Hey. Looks like googly eyes. Googly eyes. There you go. And an open mouth. Right. Seeing <laughs> all. There's a face for you. Yeah. Alexa, come for three minutes. Oh. Hi, Ann. Hey, Ann. Um, this might be cool enough. Yeah, it's cool enough to eat. We're going to close it. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to go over there. The camera's better over there. Oh, yeah. That's much better. So there's the plate. Cut them in half when you serve them because it makes it pretty pretty funny plate tonight. It looks like googly eyes with an open mouth full of mustard sauce. Yep. Fry. For another two and a half minutes. You ready? Uh, I thought we were going to get a fork. Nope. Okay. I'm going to bite into it. All right, fine. The yolk side, though. Oh, I'm good. Oh, much better than with the chorizo. Yeah, much better than the chorizo oh. one. Oh, yeah. This is more of the breakfasty flavor mm -hmm. that you kind of are after a little bit. Goes well with the hot cocoa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good scratch egg. Yummy. All right, let me check this last one and then we'll recap real fast. That's delicious. All right, you want to recap the cocktail while I drink it? Okay. So in the cocktail, we have hot chocolate homemade. We used one five ounce solid chocolate Hershey's bunny. We used Easter bunny. We used what, three eighths cups of uh, Dutch chocolate mix. We used 24 ounces of uh, half and half. Heated all that up, started all up, melted all the chocolate down. To that, we poured it in here and added two ounces of Drambuie per cocktail. Stirred it up nice and Nice and good, and it's an ultra creamy, ultra rich chocolate. You don't taste the dream movie at all. No. So. If, I mean, it's, it's there. Oh, it's there. But it will kick you later if you have enough of them. I don't know. I mean, if you've got, um, you know, glucose issues. Uh, Ten seconds. I've already taken it out. It was nice and brown. Alexa, cancel. Um, I wouldn't drink more than one of these. Alexa, cancel. There we go. But yeah, this is, and then we had scotch eggs. So, and there, I topped mine off uh, with an I extra shot of green boy. Um, so, recap of the scotch eggs. 
recipe from a few hundred years ago, to be honest. Yeah. And the the difference being we dredged and fried as opposed to not dredging and just frying. Um, six minute egg, so mm -hmm. it's a little jammy on the inside. If you don't like them that way, you know, hard boil them. Yeah. To, but um, the six minute eggs let you give you a little bit more leeway if you leave it in the fryer just a wee bit too long. Um, sausage, just regular breakfast sausage wrapped up around it. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have wet hands when you're, you know, playing with your sausage. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> and, um, flour, egg, breadcrumb in the mm -hmm. fryer, four minutes. Four minutes. At the 350 to 375 mark. And they are delicious. And your sauce? Um, sauce is equal parts must have uh, Sorry, equal parts mayo, sour cream. We did about a third of a cup. Tablespoon of spicy brown mustard. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, teaspoon, give or take, of lemon juice to kind of balance it out. Oh, shoot. You want, you want the acidic condiment to kind of cut through the richness of the sausage and mm -hmm. egg combo. Um, mm. I mean, if you wanted to dip them in milk gravy, I'd be okay with that too. That's true. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Salad would be great if you want to keep something light. French fries. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, eat whatever you want to with them, but they're they're fine by themselves. They're, they're so very filling. Yeah, you're you're really only going to be able to eat like one. I'd say one per person, mm -hmm. unless you have a you know high school football player. Or Bottomless pit. Yeah. <laughs> In the house, but yeah. So there you have it. And uh, go forth and make scotch eggs because you saw what it takes. It doesn't take much. Yeah, and we're done in 50 minutes pretty much with mm -hmm. homemade, know, hot chocolate. homemade hot chocolate. Yeah. Which is definitely worth taking the, taking the time. minutes to do it. Oh, yeah. Take the time, make some homemade hot cocoa because mm -hmm. it is delish. The bomb. Much better than the Nestle's quick version or the Swiss Miss versions. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there you have it. Mm -hmm. It's a little warm over the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, take the air conditioner on soon. On nights like this. Um, so yeah, thanks for hanging out with us tonight and watching watching us cook for you. I know some of you kind of cook and for cook for us while we're <laughs> while we're uh, cooking our dinner. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I hope you try this one, especially if you are like me and they're one of your favorite snack foods or mm -hmm. meal foods mm -hmm. to eat as a whatever. Um, so yeah, we'll be back next Monday night with something equally fabulous and probably equally simple. It's kind of the name of the game these days. We try to. But, uh, yeah, we like cooking and right? keep things simple. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then I'll I'll have some other news next week too. But I'm gonna wait a week to share it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, so we kind of almost have matching aprons. We do. We're close to it. We've got matching nameplates. We definitely have that. So, all right. Folks. See the little little amper sand right there. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Have fun, folks. We'll see you next week. And eat and eat well and drink better. Drink better.